Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the constellations and how to find them. If you're new to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications about new videos. Learn the Sky is also on Patreon, so if you'd like to support this channel, the link is listed below. And finally, if you would like to study the sky in greater detail and need a guide, visit LearnTheSky.com to learn more about our online classes we offer. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video we're going to learn about the constellation known as Aquarius. Aquarius is an ancient constellation that sits in a portion of the sky known as the sea or the water, and that's because it's surrounded by lots of other watery creatures such as Capricorn, Pisces, Cetus, and Delphinus. It can be a challenge to find this constellation since a majority of its stars are fairly dim to the naked eye. Let's get a brief introduction to Aquarius the water bear. It's an ancient zodiacal constellation that's often associated with water. For example, in the Sumerian myth about global deluge, Aquarius is within this mythology. In the Middle East, Aquarius rose during the rainy season, and in one Greek legend, Aquarius was Zeus who poured waters of life from heaven. Now the name Aquarius is Latin for water carrier or cup carrier, and it's located in the area of the sky that we call the sea or the water, because there are other aquatic creatures surrounding Aquarius. Now as you look at this photo, you may not see any star pattern really stand out to you, and that's pretty typical of Aquarius because its stars are so faint and they don't really stand out in the pattern. But if we were to take a look at it, here is where Aquarius is in blue. And I highlighted some other constellations here because these are the constellations I use to help me find it. So Aquarius is best seen in the autumn months in the northern hemisphere. And the way I find Aquarius is first trying to figure out where Capricorn is. And the pattern here, it kind of looks like this triangular shape or boomerang shape. This is the constellation I try to find because its pattern is pretty easy to point out in the sky. And from there, I try to find Aquarius right here. Aquarius also kind of has this Y-shaped pattern that I look for. Um, Aquarius is different. It's, it's one of those constellations. It really took me years to get comfortable finding, but it was really this little pattern right here that helps me find the rest of the constellation. So you really need some dark skies to find Aquarius because most of the stars are a fifth and fourth magnitude, so not very bright. It can definitely be challenging to see, but two of the stars here, they're of third magnitude. So we have the Alpha Star and Beta Star right there. But the key to finding Aquarius is really looking for Capricorn. This right here is Pisces Austrinus, so that's um, the southern fish, and it has a bright star here as well. Um, if you're living up in the higher latitudes in the northern hemisphere, you may not necessarily see this constellation, and in fact, Aquarius might be a challenge if you live in those higher northern latitudes. Now we'll take a closer look at the pattern of Aquarius. So here we have our official star map released by the International Astronomical Union. And as you look at this map, what I want you to notice right down here is the magnitude scale. So when you're looking at the magnitude scale, you can see that the two bright stars, the Alpha Star and Beta Star, are really of only third magnitude. And then the rest of the stars are of fourth fifth and sixth magnitude. And this tells us that Aquarius is a pretty dim constellation, making it difficult to find. What you can also notice from this star map is this blue line that goes through the constellations. And this is the ecliptic or the path of the sun. So since the ecliptic passes through Aquarius right here, that tells us that it's a zodiacal constellation. That's its classification. So also you can notice that it is surrounded by some of these creatures that are also would be living in the water. So we have Pisces, we have Cetus, we have the Southern Fish right here, Capricornus, and then Aquarius itself. So Aquarius represents the water bear and it's in part of the sky we 
call the sea or the water. And that's because it's surrounded so by so many other constellations that are associated with the water, such as Pisces, Capricornus, and Cetus. So now we got to get some practice on how to find this constellation. So when you're looking at this picture, there's a few constellations that stand out to me. One would be right here. This is Aquila. And then here is Capricornus. Now, the key to finding Aquarius is figuring out where Capricornus is. So here is that kind of boomerang shape of Capricornus. All right. And then right up here is where Aquarius is. And the way I always try to find it is looking for this Y-shaped head. Okay, so if we were to point everything out, this is what it would look like. We have Aquila over here. We have Capricornus, kind of this boomerang shaped constellation. And then Aquarius is right here. He's holding his urn that pours the water out. And then here we see the circlet of Pisces. The circlet is a, an asterism that's used to help find Pisces. So if we were to go back here, you can see those stars right here. Here's another picture we have. This one's a slightly longer exposure, so some of the stars tend to stand out. So can you find Capricornus? Capricornus is kind of that triangular shape constellation. And then move upwards towards the top center of the photo. Can you kind of point out that Y shape? And if we were to point out Aquarius, this is where it is located. And then here is the other constellations that we're looking at. The ones that are often related to the water as well. So I don't have very many pictures of Aquarius simply because it's a very difficult constellation to photograph because the stars are so faint. But don't let that discourage you from trying to go out and find this constellation. Remember, use Capricorn to help you find where Aquarius would be. Finally, we'll review some of the celestial objects that can be seen in the boundaries of Aquarius. So here's one star map we can take a look at. This is the official star map released by the International Astronomical Union. And you can see there's a few different celestial objects that we can look for. If we take a look at this map, it gives us a little bit more detailed version of what we would be able to see. So let's take a look. We have two star clusters right here. They're classified as globular star clusters, Messier 2 and Messier 72. Right next to M72 is Messier 73. This appears to be an open cluster, but it's really just an asterism because these stars aren't really bound to each other. They just look like they are. There's also two nebulae. There's the Saturn Nebula and then the Helix Nebula. The Saturn Nebula is really close by to these other two Messier objects. Over in this area, we've got a few different galaxies to see, but they're very, very faint objects. And these pictures were taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. So when we look at these objects, we're not likely to see this amount of detail, but really just fuzzy patches if you happen to have a good amount of magnification through binoculars or a telescope. So as you're looking for Aquarius, see if you can spot out some of these celestial objects. Messier 2, 72 are the ones that you're most likely to see with magnification. Now let's learn about some of the mythologies that surround the constellation of Aquarius. So the first records we have of Aquarius come from the Babylonian star catalogs. And Aquarius was identified as the Great One and was associated with the destructed floods that Babylonians would have. So sometimes there was a negative connotation to Aquarius. But the Babylonian star catalogs were really important because it helped with the timing of agricultural activities. So this is where we first see Aquarius. In Sumerian mythology, Aquarius was associated with the global flood. He was the bearer of the destructive flood that would ravage the planet. And it is a possibility that this is the story that gave rise to the biblical story of the flood. In some versions, he held a vessel from which the flood waters flowed from the heavens onto the earth, which sounds very much like 
one of the Greek mythologies that we will learn about later on. It's very possible that many of the Greek legends came from earlier civilizations before them. In Egyptian mythology, Aquarius was said to be the keeper of the Nile River, who would pour water into the Nile River and create the rainy season, um, and this is when the river would overflow and nourish the farmlands. In Greek mythology, Aquarius is associated with the waters of life. Here, in this legend, which we can see, uh, Aquarius was identified as Zeus, pouring water um, down from the heavens, which were the waters of life. There's also another Greek mythology legend of Ganymede. Ganymede was a handsome boy for Troy, and he was abducted by Zeus. He was taken to Mount Olympus to be the cupbearer, and Ganymede was said to have convinced Zeus to send rain down to the earth. So these are just a a small portion of the many legends that exist out there. And remember that mythologies of the stars vary according to time, place, and culture. There really is no one true mythology for any constellation. There's just a variety of them. We've come to the end of our video about Aquarius, so let's review everything we've learned so far. It's best seen in the autumn months, and it's classified as a zodiacal constellation. The best way to find it is to look for Capricorn first, this triangular-shaped constellation, and then from there look for that Y-shaped head of Aquarius, and then work from that point to find the rest of the constellation. Pegasus and Delphinus are also nearby, so you can use those constellations to help you find it as well. There are plenty of celestial objects in there, such as globular clusters and planetary nebulae. There are also a few galaxies, but most of them are pretty faint. So, I wish you luck at finding Aquarius. It's one of the challenging zodiacal constellations to find because most of its stars are so dim. So seek out dark skies when you're trying to find Aquarius. I wish you luck. Keep going outside and practicing trying to find these different star patterns. That's the only way you'll get really good at being able to find everything. So keep going outside and keep looking up.